It's time for Timothy! Yes, boys and girls, it's time to join your favorite mouse as he tells his special Christmas story, The Legend of Mordecai Mouse. after you put the horse up. Boy, oh boy, Daisy sure can go. Oh, sometimes she almost goes too fast. Coming down that last hill was sort of scary. Are you kidding? That was the most fun of all. It was exciting, like being part of the wind swooping over the hill. Mm, and I didn't even get cold. It was so crisp and clear out. Almost made me feel like a boy again. <laughs> Yes, and just like when you were a boy, you didn't wear your muffler, and now you'll come down with a cold. It's sulfur and molasses for you, young man. Oh, now, Aunt Agatha, I'm a grown man. All right, now, here we are. Okay, open up, open up. I hate that stuff. Couldn't I just take an aspirin? Nonsense. You know as well as I do, those modern remedies just cannot replace my old tonic. Now, swallow this quick, just like I say. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's a good boy, Reverend Good. Well, I have to admit, it, it's prevented many a cold, so I guess it works. <laughs> you ought to put it in bottles and sell it, Aunt Agatha. <laughs> All righty, youngsters. I promised you an old-fashioned Christmas. So first of all, we'll make the tree decorations. Make them? Oh, yes, young man, make them. Oh, that was a fine tree you and Hiram cut down this afternoon, Timothy. Lots of full branches. Yeah, it is pretty, isn't it? Hiram and I looked all over the woods for just the right tree. Kathleen, now you put these pictures on the cookies we baked while Timothy was out tree oh. hunting. Like this, honey, see? Mm, so that's what you meant when you said there were special cookies and you wouldn't let me eat any. Oh, they make the prettiest decorations you ever did see. Look. Then we'll put a string through the top and we'll hang them up. Uh, Timothy, you take this foil and cut out some stars and bells. Great. I'll make a big star for the top of the tree, okay? Okay. And here's a big bowl of popcorn for you, Bobby. You... Aunt Agatha, couldn't you please call me Robert? After all, I am a grown man now, and a minister at that. Why, you've been Bobby to me from the day you were born. Now, wouldn't I sound foolish calling you Reverend Good? Or even Robert? You string the cranberries and popcorn, Bobby. Oh, yes, ma'am. Hey, don't eat it all up. There won't be enough. That's a big tree, you know. What else did you do in the olden times, Aunt Agatha? Well, we'd all sing Christmas carols as we roasted chestnuts by the fire. 
And then we'd tell and retell all of our favorite Christmas stories and legends. That sounds like a cue for me. Dickens' Christmas Carol. <laughs> Think I could tell it from memory. I like all the stories about Santa Claus. <laughs> Jolly old Saint Nicholas. <laughs> loved the legend of St. Francis of Assisi, who, who just loved the animals. You know, he started the custom of acting out the scene in the manger. Oh, those stories are okay, I guess. But of course, the very best Christmas story of all is the legend of Mordecai Mouse. Mordecai Mouse? Oh, Timothy, you can't be serious. Timothy, there is no Christmas legend about Mordecai Mouse. You're making that up. I am not, am I, Kathleen? Oh, of course not. All mice know about Mordecai. Well, I've lived a lot of years, and I've heard a lot of stories. But a Christmas story about Mordecai Mouse, oh, that does beat all. Well, all right, Timothy. If you say there is such a story, let's hear it. Well, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, even, even before the olden days when you were young, Aunt Agatha. In fact, it was almost 2,000 years ago. There lived in the far-off country of Judea a most unhappy, discontented, and selfish mouse named Mordecai. Now, Mordecai was getting along in years, and it seemed the older he got, the more crotchety he became. He lived in a stable with several other animals. And if you think they were one big happy family, you are wrong. Bicker, 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 all day long and on into the night. There was Petula, the old cow, bossiest cow in all Bethlehem. And when she didn't get her own way, she sulked. And when she sulked, her milk got thin and tasteless, most annoying. Then there was Ramus, the ram who complained constantly. Either his wool was too warm, or he felt undressed when he was sheared, never happy with things the way they were. And recently arrived was Sheba, a camel who belonged to a wealthy merchant who was staying at the inn. Sheba was from the far-off city of Jerusalem and looked down her long nose at the other animals and considered them peasants. A very superior type, she thought. And that's how things were in the stable long, long ago. Someone's been messing up my bed again. Petula, you greedy old cow, it was you. You still have hay in your mouth. You know this manger is my bed. I've spent hours smoothing it up and selecting the very finest hay. If you don't stay out of it, I'll tie knots in your tail tonight when you sleep. Complain, complain, complain. Mordecai, you selfish mouse. You have the best bed in the stable. A little hay, more or less, won't ruin it. And besides, it's most important that I eat well. After all, I am very important around here, you know. They depend on my rich, nourishing milk at the inn. So if I want your hay, I'll eat your hay. And if you get nasty about it, I'll pout. You'll pout, my dear. I'm the one who really has something to pout about. Such uncomfortable quarters. 
Oh, they're all right for the rest of you. You don't know any better. But in the city where I come from, I'm used to a large stable where servants brush us camels until our coats shine. Such a bore being quartered here with barely room to move about. If you don't like it, why did you come? Nobody invited you, you know. Oh, my master would have it this way. He knew there would be great throngs of people here in Bethlehem during the time of taxation. And being a shrewd merchant, he brought his wares here and set up a booth. And since I'm his favorite camel, of course he selected me to carry him on his journey. But you would think he could have found a finer inn than this, with more comfortable stables for me. Not even a servant around to brush me. Such a bore. Bores, are we? I'd butt you with my horns, but they'd probably just break off in that tough hide of yours. Oh, how dare you speak to me like that, you uncouth clod. Uncouth clod? She's got your number, Ramus, old boy. Well, my dear, you're really not much better chewing that could. Uncouth clods, all of you. Wait till you hear. Just wait till you hear. Hannah, Han, hush your mouth. We've heard enough of your gossip, always stirring up rumors. Go lay an egg and be useful for a change. G gossip, you say? Oh, little you know, cooped up here in this stable. They wouldn't keep you around if it weren't for the milk you give. Thin as it is. Not that I'm really interested, but what's your gossip? I mean, news, Hannah. Well, if you're really interested. Interested? Oh, of course they're interested. All ears, I'd say. Well, you know the inn is crowded. Literally jammed full of Roman soldiers. They think this time of taxation is a time for feasting. You should see them up at the inn laughing and eating rich food. And the town of Bethlehem is running over with those poor people from all over Judea who came to pay their taxes to Caesar Augustus. You call that news? Those soldiers are just doing their duty. If they want to laugh and enjoy themselves, no harm in that. Well, you'd think the least they could do would be to help those poor people find lodgings. Town's so crowded a decent hen can't walk around the streets without getting chased and stepped on. <laughs> what you have to complain about? If you had to wear this wool in this hot weather, you'd know what real misery is. Scratch and itch, itch and scratch story of my life. Watch out, Hannah, you're sitting on my bed. I've got it smoothed out for the night. Now scat! I'm going up to the inn to get some of those fancy crumbs and cheese for my dinner. And I'm warning you, if that bed is must when I get back, I'll scratch all night long and keep you all awake, selfish old mouse. The greedy old cow. Oh, my It was a world of turmoil within the stable that night, and at the same time, under the quiet stars, a man led a weary donkey carrying a tired woman into the streets of Bethlehem. Those Roman soldiers weren't the only ones eating well tonight. <laughs> Best feast I've had in weeks. Wife, you've done us proud tonight. The food was superb, and our guests dined well. The inn is filled to capacity, and our pockets are jingly with, with well-earned monies. Taxation time brings wealth to the mighty Caesar and a few extra shekels to the innkeeper and his wife as well, eh? Extra rudeness and noise, I'd say. Oh, you answer it, husband. I am weary. What do you want? My wife and I need a room for the night. 
No, no, sorry, we're all filled up. No room at this inn tonight. But please, kind sir, just a corner somewhere. My wife is not well. We have traveled far. Too bad. Try somewhere else. We're, we've not a corner to spare. Well, we've gone everywhere. Up one street and down another. Surely you have something. Nothing, I say, nothing. Husband, have pity. Wife, see how pale she is. Yes, yes, it's true. I'd, I'd like to help, but where? Where is there room? Would you, would you have me send them to the stable with the animals? The stable? Yes, it's clean and away from the crowd and noise. Oh, at least the poor woman could rest in comfort. Good fellow, would you and your wife care to lodge in our stable tonight? There is clean hay for a bed. Oh, you are most kind, most kind. The Lord will bless you for your thoughtfulness. <laughs> Little sleep they'll get with that restless bunch in the stable. Hanny hen clucking like a magpie, Petula cow chewing her cud, Ramus scratching and complaining. Oh, well, I should care, as long as they stay away from my bed of hay. Hmm, better get back down there and look after my rights. Strange night, this. The very breeze seems to carry a melody, and yet so silent and still. The sky overhead seems to be on fire. The brilliance almost blinds me. Strange, but that magnificent star ahead seems to take roots in our humble stable, making it appear to be the palace of a king. Come with me, Mordecai, for surely tonight you will meet a king. Me? Meet a king? Little chance of that. Who are you? I am the Dove of Peace, sent by God to watch over the babe born tonight in the stable. Your stable, Mordecai. A king born in our stable? Ah, the woman at the inn. Mary, chosen by God to bear his own son. God's son? Born in a stable? Why did God not choose a palace as the birthplace for his son? Because he wants his son to know all people. Oh, what will he think of us? So quarrelsome and selfish. We should have had time to prepare. The great power of his love has already touched the hearts of your friends. They too know the secret of this child. All meanness has left their hearts. Tula has provided a large bucket of rich milk as nourishment for Mary and her husband Joseph. And her bossy bellow has become a soft lowing to lull the babe to sleep. Not one word of complaint did Ramus utter when Mary rested her weary head on his woolly back, using it for a pillow. The fine linen from the back of Sheba, the camel, became the garment Mary used to wrap and warm the babe. And Sheba has knelt in humble adoration of this new king. Hannah, the hen, has rushed forth to tell the world of the news, the great news. Tonight in Bethlehem, a king has been born for the world. Indeed, the child has changed the hearts of those inside the stable. But alas, what have I to give to one so great? I too would like to know the joy of giving, but I am old and have little to give. Perhaps your gift is one of the greatest of all, Mordecai. The bed of straw that you have so carefully laid has become the throne for a king. Mary has laid her son Jesus in the manger. Come, I will show you. Tis a miracle indeed. Oh, how serene you look, little one, lying on my bed of straw. Tonight, for the first time since I was a wee one, do I feel all selfishness and greed leave my heart. You have by your very presence brought peace into a quarrelsome stable. But alas... I'm afraid you will find all the same weaknesses in those outside the stable. 
Would that I could follow you as mankind becomes aware of your greatness, a greatness that will grow as decades touch hands with centuries. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. Oh, you're right, Timothy. You've just told us the most wonderful Christmas story of all. For without the birth of Christ, there would be no Christmas. It was a little different version than I've ever heard before. But you know, Timothy, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Can't imagine why you've never heard it before. All animals everywhere know the legend of Mordecai Mouse. Guess it's just people who've never heard it. <laughs> All righty, now let's trim that Christmas tree. Ah. Timothy, have you got the stars and bells? Right here, Aunt Agatha. Kathleen, how about those decorated cookies? Mm -hmm. Here they are, Aunt Agatha. Aren't they beautiful? Mm. Now, Bobby, hand me your popcorn strand. <gasps> Rob Randolph, good. You didn't. Aunt Agatha, he's eating all the popcorn. So, sorry about that. I guess I got carried away with your story, Tim. <laughs> oh, you never will grow up, will you, Bobby? Oh, well, there's no harm done. Lots more popcorn where that came from. We'll get some more later. I'll start on this side. Hand me a cookie, Kathleen. Okay. Oh, I'll need some stars over here, Timothy. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year!